Hello everybody, Shady here from MMO Bomb, and I am bringing you episode 2 of League of Legends Champions. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different from episode 1 because today we are covering wards. The last episode that we released we got a ton of feedback, I loved it, I loved all the good comments, I loved the criticisms, I loved the ideas, and what you guys said is you wanted some gameplay tactics, you wanted to know how to ward, gank, all that good stuff. So, we're going to be incorporating that into the show, and I hope you guys enjoy it. First off, you have two types of wards that can be purchased at your shop under the consumables section. You have the Sight Ward, which is 75 gold, lasts for 3 minutes, and gives you vision of an area. You also have the Vision Ward, which is 125 gold, lasts for the same amount of time, and gives you Stealth Vision of an area, which means it not only detects Stealth Champions, it will also detect other wards. These items can be placed on the map, they give you vision of that area. What this does is it helps you spot incoming gangs, it can help you control map objectives such as Dragon or Baron, and also increases map awareness for your entire team letting you know where the enemy is. Wards can and should be purchased by everybody on the team. The most common misconception that I hear of when it comes to wards is that only the jungler and the support should be buying wards. This is absolutely not true. Everybody needs them in their lanes. Everybody should be helping the team with map awareness. While I wouldn't suggest starting off the game with 6 wards, if you're leaving the base and you have an open item slot and you have more than 75 gold and you don't have a ward, you're doing something wrong. Go back, get a ward, take it to your lane, and save it for later if you don't need it. Easy as that. Next up, I want to show you guys ward locations. Please note that all of these warding locations are taken with the bottom left blue team being allies and the top right purple team being enemies. The first ward I'm going to show you is for top lane. This ward is placed in order to see enemies entering your lane attempting to gank you. You can see here you have a pretty far view down river as well as a view of any enemies coming into your lane from tri bush. An alternative to this ward is placing a ward directly in your tri brush. This ward should only be used if you're having trouble catching the enemies entering the brush and they're catching you by surprise. This gives you decreased vision down river and towards the tri brush. However, it does give you vision inside the river brush in case there is an enemy there. Another useful warding location for both top and bottom lanes is actually in your lane brush. Placing a ward here in the secondary brush allows you to see if the jungler is actually attempting to come through the lane or through tri brush in order to avoid the river ward and gank you. And next on our stop is mid. You can see here that this ward near the enemy race provides you with a ton of information. One, it lets you know if the race is there so you know if you can go and steal them or not. Two, it shows you all of the directions that the enemy could be taking to either enter your lane, head to top lane, or even head to cover mid lane if mid is going back. Since mid lane has two directions for an enemy jungler to come in and gank you from, another good ward location is to the right hand side of your lane in the enemy's brush near blue. This gives you a very advanced warning if the enemy jungler is coming to gank you as well as letting you know if mid is going MIA to bottom to perform a gank, allowing you to ping and warn your teammates. And last on our stop is bottom lane. You can see here this ward provides you vision of enemies entering from tri bush as well as from river, and you can see enemies crossing over from their blue buff towards dragon. Okay guys, so now that I've showed you where to place your wards during the laning phase, I wanted to talk about how ward priorities will shift over time. As towers are gained and lost, as objectives such as baron and uh, dragon are taken and respawn, and as your enemies start to buy vision wards and get in oracles, you are going to need to change when you put your wards down and where they go. To show you what I mean by this, we're going to take a look at some towers here. As you can see, the first tower is up, we're warding fine, we're getting ganks, you know, we're making sure that we're not going to die in the lane. If for some reason we lose this tower, our lane doesn't go well, we're down to tower 2, our wards are going to shift. You're moving them over towards Baron, you're moving them towards blue buff, into your jungle, to be aware still of the enemy movements but to also cover new objectives that take priority. Once you lose that second tower, again the wards shift a little bit, you still want to cover Baron and you still want to cover the jungle to watch the enemy's movements. So now that we've talked about wards covering for ganking and we've talked about wards replacing towers as they go down, we're going to talk about their third and final use which is covering map objectives. The main objectives being the red and blue buffs, Dragon and Baron. Using wards to cover these locations at the correct times is paramount to their usage. Remember, it's the quality of your ward placement that will save you money in the long run compared to having to go for quantity where you're just placing wards where you probably don't need them and when you don't need them. 
Paying attention to the respawn timers on Dragon and Baron is very important. Baron has a 7 minute respawn timer and Dragon has a 6 minute respawn timer. This means that you need to keep track of when these objectives go down so that you're not using wards during those 6 or 7 minutes when no one's going to take that objective. Once you know Baron's coming up in a minute or so, go in with wards, place them in a position where you can see if the enemy's going in, and then just watch as they fall straight into your lap. So up until now, everything seems pretty straightforward, right? All you need to do is ward objectives, ward your lane, you're good to go. Well, now we're going to talk about counter warding. That's right, vision wards and oracles, those two nasty little items that allow the enemy to clear your wards and stop your vision, or allow you to do the same. Wards take three hits to kill, no matter what your attack damage is, and remember, when you buy a pink ward, use it wisely. If you put it down and nothing's there, you just wasted an extra 50 gold for no reason. Oracles is an item that costs 400 gold, it's a lot more expensive than the wards are, it acts like an elixir to where it's an activated item you can keep in your inventory and use it when you want to. Once used, it buffs your champion with the ability to see through stealth on both items and champions, which means you can clear wards, and it lasts until death. Obviously this means to get your 400 gold benefit, you need to live a long time and you need to clear a lot of wards. Therefore, oracles is only really useful if your enemy's buying a lot of wards and placing them in areas where it doesn't make sense to use vision wards, such as two separate bushes. Since oracles is cancelled upon death, let your tankiest person, or the person you expect to live in fights, take oracles. It's not an item for just anybody on your team. Okay guys, well that is it for me on episode 2 of League of Legends Champions. I hope you learned a little something about warding. And remember to put your own spin on it. There's tons of things you can do with wards. You can teleport to them, you can use some champion abilities and interact with them. Uh, you can play mind games with them. There's tons of creative things you can do with wards that aren't your typical everyday use. And if it works, then that's awesome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel for future episodes. Rate up or down. Let me know what you think. Your feedback is appreciated. And I will see you guys on the next episode.